Hi, Brian Beam for Red Giant, here to talk about the new features in Tramp Code Particular, part of Tramp Code Suite Release 15. So the big thing that we want to talk about today is fluid dynamics. It's a new physics model in particular where particles behave as if they're suspended in fluid. With fluid physics, you can create beautiful organic animation like smoke and tornadoes and churning liquids, and it's really like nothing that you've ever been able to do in After Effects before. And probably the coolest thing about it is that the fluid systems can interact with each other. So the best way to be able to create these fluids is to use the designer. So let's go into the particular designer and take a look at how they work. So before we get started with fluids, one of the things that's new with this release is the introduction of a blue playhead. So as we hit play, you're going to see that move from left to right. And it's just a small way to be able to see where you are in time. It's a super useful addition. So to get into our new physics mode, we're going to click this physics block. And if we go over to the physics model in the settings, you're going to see air and bounce, which you're familiar with and have been in particular for a long time. And you'll see the addition of a new physics model, and that's fluid. So if we click fluid, immediately you're going to see the way that the particles interact with the world change. So this arrow that's here is part of the UI for fluids, and it's one of the reasons that we're using the designer today. You can do all of this setup with the normal twirl downs in the composition window, but it's much easier to be able to go into the designer and see how things are interacting through this UI. So let's switch our emitter type to an OBJ. So we're going to go to our emitter type block, then choose OBJ model from the emitter type dropdown. And let's go into the picker. In particular, comes with a lot of models that we can choose from. And we want something that has X, Y, and Z because fluids are really helped by something that has a volume of space to it. So let's select the Sphere Smooth and click OK. And as soon as we click OK and load up the OBJ, you'll see that our animation is now much more dynamic. So let's go ahead and increase the particles. And as I do, I want you to look at this little gray line that is in our timeline. So I set it to 1,000, and you immediately saw that gray line kind of scale across the screen. So let's try that again if we scale it to 2,000. That is caching the fluid simulation, and that's definitely a change in this release in particular. It's caching what's going on with the particles. So you can see that playback is still very fast. Now let's go into Opacity, and we're going to select the bell curve preset just to be able to get our particles to fade on and fade off. And then let's go into Color, and we will select the Fire preset. And now we've got kind of a cool, swirly, fiery look. So if we go back into Physics, the first mode that is always selected is called Buoyancy and Swirl, and that's the one we're going to take a look at first. This box here is called the Force Region Size. And that shows that it is 500 pixels wide. So we can scale that up and down. And that's going to just affect how our system is working and what's going on with it. If you can see that we shrink it down, the particles that are being affected by it are inside of the box. And these elements that are outside of the box are being affected less. So if we adjust the buoyancy, that's going to cause the particles to rise or fall. I like to sort of visualize it as bubbles or coins. Um, and then if you turn the buoyancy up, you're going to see this arrow start to get bigger. And you're going to see the particles want to rise faster through the fluids. Because they're lighter than the fluids are. And if we turn that down, you'll see the arrow getting smaller. And then the arrow is going to flip upside down. And as we increase that value downward, you're going to really see the particles want to fall down faster, sort of like coins falling into a fluid. The position of our fluid force doesn't have to be centered up. So we can go to force relative position. And if we move that around, you can see that the force is affecting a different part of our emitter. Um, so outside of the designer, you could animate this and be able to have this move around. Um, adjust the size. You know, all of this stuff is keyframable outside of the designer. 
But it's important to kind of note just how the particles get affected if they are outside of the volume of the force. So swirl here is going to cause turbulence inside of the fluid. So with our buoyancy at zero, if we start to crank that up, it's going to get more and more chaotic. And the further the particles travel from their original position, and we can scale that up. Higher numbers are going to slow things down a little, but you can get some really nice tight swirls. Or if we take the swirl scale and we go that down, it's going to create a simpler but larger swirl inside of the fluid. If you want to sort of visualize it in your head, it'd be sort of like looking at the fractal noise plugin, and that as we turn up the value, it's going to create a smaller and more detailed level of swirl. And as we scale it down, it's going to be simpler, um, but bigger. So we can switch XYZ linked under random swirl to XYZ individual. If we select the drop down and click it, you'll see that immediately it switches to only applying swirl in the x dimension. So if we change that to zero and now set it to z, you can create some really interesting effects by only affecting one dimension. You can also mix those. So there's x and y. And then if we change the random seed, it's a way to kind of dial in and experiment with different looks. Change the number, and you get a different animation. So now that we've had a chance to look at buoyancy and swirl, let's take a look at the vortex ring. You'll notice as I select it, it's going to turn on a set of controls underneath random seed. It's also going to change the UI. So our box has gone away, and we are left with a line. And if we tilt that line, you'll see that it's actually a ring. So in the vortex ring, it's shooting particles up through the center. And so we've got a couple of controls that can control that. As we adjust the strength, it's going to adjust the amount of force propelling the particles up through the ring. And if we take that and make that negative, it's going to start sucking the particles down through the ring, very much like a whirlpool in the ocean. And our buoyancy controls still work. So if we have a small strength, and we've got our buoyancy set to 5, but we turn the buoyancy down, now these particles are going to feel like they want to fall, but the vortex is going to be trying to suck them up and push them up. So vortex tilt and vortex rotate allow you to change the orientation of the ring in space. It's not going to affect the force that's in the strength, so it's still going to suck up or suck down based on the vortex strength, but you can reorient where that force is directed towards. So if we have that set to zero, it's going to force the particles up. But if we have it set to 90, it's going to push the particles out towards the screen. We've also got a set of controls called Visualize Relative Density, and it's going to control the way particles appear when there are a lot of fluid forces in an area and a lot of particles. So if we turn on opacity, you're going to see that anywhere there are a lot of particles and a lot of forces, it's going to get more opaque. This might be easier to visualize if we turn up the number of particles. So let's go from 1,000 to 10,000, and it's going to take a second to cache. And you're going to see that it's opaque where there's a lot of forces in the center, and out towards the edge, it's more transparent. So more particles, more fluid forces, 100% opacity. Less fluid forces, less particles, more transparent. And if we switch that from opacity to brightness, now you can see that anywhere there's more of these forces and more particles, it's going to get brighter, and the opposite in the areas where there's less going on. So I end up using this brightness mode a lot. It's sort of like a transfer mode, like add, but also an ambient occlusion. 
Um, so with this fire, you end up with these really cool glowy bits where there's more going on. And then towards the edge, you get sort of this smoke effect. We've also got these controls up at the top called Apply Force. And it gives us two options, at start and continuously. Continuously is just going to always have that vortex working and always continually sucking up things through the tube. So if you choose at start, you're going to get one big burst of force, and then the particles would only be influenced by buoyancy, swirls, and any interaction from other fluid particle systems. Okay, we've reset our master system, and now we're going to take a look at the vortex tube fluid force. If vortex ring is like a whirlpool, then vortex tube is sort of like one of those Dyson vacuum cleaners. It's sort of creating a tornado or a cyclone where it's spinning the particles around this central core. And it's not shooting them up or shooting them down. It's just making them go around and around and around. So we've got all of the same controls, but instead of shooting them up or down, we're controlling the strength of how fast they're spinning in one direction clockwise. And if we adjust the core size, it adjusts the diameter of the vortex forces used to spin the fluid particles. And one way to think about the core size is if you picture a hurricane, um, this inner circle is the eye of the hurricane. Everything is calm inside of this, and you can start to see the particles that are sort of in the core not doing a whole lot. And then all of the activity is happening in this kind of meat of the circle between the outer ring and the inner ring. And so if we adjust that core size down, it's going to make the eye of the hurricane that much smaller as these things spin around and around and around. So we've also got tilt, which is going to just change the direction that those are in. We can rotate it. And then if we adjust the strength and go negative, those particles are going to start flying around counterclockwise. So those are the Australian particles. So next, let's take a look at the global fluid controls. The fluid dynamics have individual settings, and that's what we've been playing with. But they also have global settings, which control all of the fluids. Think of it like a set of controls that control the nature of the tank of fluid. FYI, if you're working with more than one fluid system, the global controls will only be found in the master system. So fluid time factor controls the speed of the fluid physics. Basically, it allows you to speed up or slow down the animation of all of the fluid interactions. And this is keyframable in After Effects. So over time, you could create your bullet time effect like the matrix or go crazy and have it go much faster. So if we switch to 10, that is a pretty crazy look. If we go back to 4, it's still crazy. 1, that's the normal time. And then if we go down to... 0.5, that's going to be half speed. And then one is back to normal speed. So next, let's talk about viscosity. So viscosity is going to be the thickness of the fluid that the particles are going through. At 20, that's sort of like normal water. If we turn it up to 100, that's kind of more like it's trying to go through something that's closer to, to molasses or honey maybe a little thinner than that. And if we go the other way, it's just going to make the water that much thinner. And so there's really not a lot of resistance to keep the particles moving through the liquid. And finally, simulation fidelity. A higher number yields more micro interactions or finer detail in the fluid behavior. Higher numbers are going to be more complex and lower numbers are going to be simpler but run faster. If we crank it up, it's going to spend more time thinking about how all of the particles are going to move. You know, you can see here, we've got 50,000 particles now, and it's taking a long time to think about what it's going to do. But it's going to be highly accurate once it calculates. And that's a really good way to get very fine detail. but if you want it to go faster. So if we double click on simulation fidelity and reset it to four, it's gonna go back to the default and it's gonna run 
faster. And then if we go to one, it'll think through much faster, but it'll be simpler. So we've looked at single fluid systems, but the real power of this tool is being able to use multiple fluid systems together. So I've got this set up loaded, and let's figure out how to make two of these interact with each other. So I'm going to go to my master system, and I'm going to hit duplicate. And you're going to see that immediately the effect is going to get a lot stronger because there are two systems on top of each other. So let's hit pause. With that second system, I'm going to go to the color, and we're going to go back to the fire that we've been using. And let's go to the emitter, and let's move where the emitter is living. So let's move that way over to the right. And then let's change the vortex strength to be negative instead of positive. So let's go negative 400. And now if we go ahead and play back, let's see what happens. Now we've got our two systems shooting out and smashing into each other. So one thing to keep in mind is that if you turn off the system, the particles are still there. You just can't see them. So you can see that our system is still active, and our particles in the master system are smashing up against it. So this could be a really cool way to uh, create a visual effect. You know, imagine that someone is projecting a force field, and someone has an energy beam that's shooting up against it. You know, that force field could propel the particles like this, and that could look really cool. There's probably all sorts of other ideas that you could come up with as well. So each system in your setup also doesn't have to have the same fluid force. So let's try switching this one to vortex tube from vortex ring. And you can see that they're both still in the same fluid, but they're interacting in different ways. We can try moving that in a little closer, and you can see how they'll interact. So we have one more fluid force to look at, and that's none. So we'll go back to system two, and let's try switching this to none. And now we'll go back, and when we hit play, you're going to see that the second system is just sitting around and waiting for the other system to come and interact with it. So now we're back in regular After Effects, and let's take a look at how to adjust things out here. So I'm going to go to Show Systems, and make sure that I have Master System selected. And we've got the same global fluid controls here that we do inside of the designer, but now they're keyframeable. So let's go ahead and set our fluid time factor to 1, and go up and maybe set another keyframe. And then a few frames later, let's go ahead and set that to 0.25, and we'll see what happens. It's worth noting that you can only access the global fluid controls from the master system. And now we've created our slow motion effect. So we can also adjust the regular fluids through the effect controls. So if we go to our systems, and we select System 2, and we go to Physics, and twirl down our fluid controls, you can see all of the controls that we've been working with here. And if we go ahead and move that position, or change the size, it's going to dynamically affect all of our simulation. Lastly, before we go, I wanted to show you the presets that come inside of the preset panel. There are a lot of both single system presets and multiple system presets to help get you started. And all of them are adjustable once you load them up. Also, in the block section, there are new fluid presets to be able to get you started there. So it's also worth noting that Particular and Form both have fluids, but they act a little differently. In particular, we kind of have a hose that's in the water emitting particles into this fluid. And those particles are then affected by the forces that are in the fluid. With Form, we have those same forces, but the particles aren't emitted. Particles in Form are always present. That means that the way those forces affect those particles ends up creating vastly different, but still really cool effects. We'll cover what happens in Trapcode Form in another video. I can't wait to see what people do with the plugin. Thanks for watching.